Hi, this is Frank Simon with the rest of the news. We're here in the studio and we've got some outstanding video to show you and articles to go over with you. And here in the studio with me is Pastor John Brewer and Cindy Marlowe. Hello. Let's see if we can start that video now, can we? The hard part is sometimes yeah. you get your finger caught in this yeah. computer. Go to the second one. Oh, here we go. I think you all can hear it on the air, but we can't hear it exactly. I'm going to keep quiet so you can listen. I don't know why I'm not able to get it for you, Dr. Summer. Do you know what he was saying? Well, he said there was a news conference. Many of the Christian leaders in America were at a news conference in the White House with Trump. Trump asked all the media to leave, and he started talking to the Christian leaders. Was that just recently? No, about a year ago. Trump says, I'm trying to keep Christianity alive, and there are people out there that want to get rid of it. We need to work together in order to keep the far-left people from destroying Christianity. Somebody was not yeah, supposed yeah, to yeah, yeah. record it. The speaker is gone. Why don't we just talk about it and forget the video? There was nobody supposed to be recording it, like you said. But there was somebody, and really it's a good thing he did record it because it was very important information that the president said. And he was showing he was genuine. And humble. And his support for the Christian causes in the culture war. When did this take place? A year ago. He was talking just before the midterm elections. That makes sense of what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, so bringing that forward, nothing has changed. In fact, it's actually more important now than right. it was then. We've seen in the last year... Just emphasizes what yeah, the man said. We've seen in the last year, they have brought forth another impeachment out of thin air. No facts. With no facts. No broken laws. No broken laws. It is the thinnest of impeachments that has ever actually been put forward, at least since the Civil War. This is what I got out of it. He's saying Christians of all different denominations, Protestant, Catholic, everybody, need to work together because we're in danger and we need each other, or they're going to take us over. That is basically true. And they're not doing it in just one way. They're using multiple ways. It's gotten to the point where almost anything is fair game at this point. It all relates to culture. I just found out on the news on the way over here that a man from Iowa is sentenced to jail. He was arrested in June, but he was sentenced just recently in Iowa. He went up to a church, United Methodist Church, who had an LBGT flag and burned it and destroyed it. And so he's in jail now for 15 years. But you can burn the American flag <laughs> and just get away with an alarm for because you've started well, arson or something. freedom of speech when you burn well, the American flag. What it boils down to is... All the culture is just totally opposite of what God wants. Now we have same-sex yeah. marriage. We're killing little children in the womb. Well, that's it's what John was saying, to. that this evangelist and his message is even more important today than it was a yeah. year ago when he gave it, because the cultural war is heating up. Well, it's beyond that. Look what Pelosi's doing. She's now demanding that she decides how the Senate will proceed. That is not constitution. They don't care about the Constitution. Railroading over American it's not even democracy. We don't even have a pure democracy. A pure democracy is like what Greek had. We are a republic, which means they're supposed to represent us. Right. And then that right. one lady, what Elon, she said, I'm going to impeach the mf -er. Yeah. And we have those kind of people in the halls of Congress. Oh, she does not deserve to walk the halls of Congress. He's uh, a Muslim, isn't she? Well, I don't care what she is, but I guess she is. That kind of talk toward a president, if we would have said something like that, to Obama, we would have been thrown they in burned, jail. Probably. Burned alive at the stake. <laughs> I think it's important for you to talk about what's going on in Virginia. It's just amazing to me. This has happened within the last two weeks, and since the elections have happened, Virginia was one of those states that flipped the House, the Senate, and the governor are right. all Democrats. Right. I think I may have said this last week, but it's like they think they're California now. And they're as wild and crazy, and they're going after the guns. Some people have mentioned this kind of stuff before, like it couldn't happen, but it is. These are bills that are 
being considered, and they have the votes to get those things through. But the response of the citizens has been tremendous. In two weeks' time, we have gone, one week was 40 counties, now it's 80 counties, and virtually the entire state now has set up some sort of sanctuary, not sanctuary cities for the illegal immigrants. Second Amendment sanctuary yeah, resolution. For people who are gun owners. So that somebody can't just come in and take those guns away, but they're relying on the federal government. They're relying on the Second Amendment in the Bill of Rights for us to be able to possess weapons. In recent times, probably the last week, maybe the last couple of days even, They've actually set up a militia. It was a state representative that mentioned this, said, well, we'll just call out the National Guard. So they said, we'll just form a militia, militia. just like Kentucky. We are able to do the same thing. Every state. They're willing to go to such extremes, nothing is off limits. So Virginia is actually like a tinderbox right now. Let me just summarize what you said. Democrats with Bloomberg, Bloomberg yeah. put millions of dollars into the elections in Virginia and allowed the Democrats to take over the governor's position, the House position. I think they already had the governor, but what they did is they spent on 24 races, 21 out of the 24, spent $41 million. $41 million for the Democrats to take over. Virginia. And as soon as the Democrats took over Virginia, they passed legislation to confiscate everybody's gun. Now, it hasn't actually cleared. It's still in the Senate, but they control both houses. And they have the vote. And they have the vote. So they're in the process of trying to confiscate all the guns. Bloomberg. Presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg. He's a Democrat. And he is trying to get all the guns taken away from you and me and everybody that's got a gun. He wants to take your gun away like all the others, like Hitler. As soon as they get your guns, they're going to put you in jail. This is one of their first objectives. I just heard this, too. This all goes along with what you're all saying in Chively, down the street from Dixie, I guess the West End. Like downtown, and then you come up from downtown, it's on the... West End before you get to the West End. Well, a store owner was just shot and killed today or yesterday, and it was at a bar, I think, last night, the place where they go and eat, show shows and stuff. He was getting rowdy or something. The owner asked him to leave, so the guy left and came back in and shot him. Shot the owner. The policeman shot him only in the leg. But what it boils down to is he was a felon. He wasn't supposed to have a gun. Here they are trying to confiscate law-abiding citizens who wants to protect themselves. Oh, yeah. And don't you think that the felons are going to still get them? Of course they are. Well, they want the law-abiding citizens' guns. That's the ones they want. Well, they don't want us to uprise against them. They want to control everybody. Well, that's what the amendment, Second Amendment, it's not that we have already an armed Navy. Go hunting. And they say it's the armed Navy and the Marines. No, it means the people can form a militia. To protect your family. Their rights, God-given, not man-given. And, and they're and, trying to take everybody's gun in Virginia. Yeah, and they don't want that. Because this yeah. one guy, Bloomberg, put millions in there to try to get your guns away. Yeah, but people voted for him, so the people say Well, was, okay, now that's a good point. Here's the bottom line. If Christians don't get out and vote, it's not enough to just vote. Like if John here is running for state representative, We better get behind him and donate to him and help him win that election. That is so true. It's not enough to just vote. you got to vote, that's for sure. But you got to do more than that. You've got to put your money and your blood and your sweat and your tears into the Christian candidates. I'd like to frame it this way. The American citizen is like a stockholder in a company. And we all own stock in America. In America, whether it's on a local basis or a national basis, we control what happens to that. Our freedoms. We control what happens to our country. If you're an individual and you 
invest in another company and you're you're a stockholder. You just don't sit idly by while they go and take your company away. We were talking yesterday at lunch. His name is Ben Kennedy, and he has an organization called Made, Made in Heaven. Heaven. Made Made in Heaven. Heaven. And I remember very clearly, he says, we need soldiers. Didn't he say that? He absolutely said it. He doesn't necessarily mean with a gun. He means people who culture are tough-minded. War, culture war soldiers. Yeah, culture war soldiers that are tough-minded. They're not going to worry about going out to Cracker Barrel for lunch or something. We need people that are going to stand even though they don't feel like standing. Cindy, she didn't feel like coming. But she came because she's a soldier. She's tough-minded. Push is coming to shove. Unfortunately, it is. And because we have drifted and drifted as a nation. Well, they're taking the guns away from the average citizen in Virginia right now as we're talking. They're trying. They're, they're trying. In the process of passing the laws. In a month's time is what I had heard they have organize this and I guess they probably have a provision in Virginia it's like an emergency act legislation is going to come about pretty soon people stayed home and let the far left go out and vote in these radical left wingers in Virginia which used to be a conservative state and now they're in the process of saying we're going to come and get your gun but what they don't realize and they haven't paid attention to is they need to take a good, close look at what's happening in San Francisco, what's happening in Seattle. We had a problem. Yeah, we did. How these cities and these communities are just going totally to pot. Give the reference on that article, because that's a really good article that you were referring to. This is all in an article. The article comes from usanews.com. If you do a search on that, do a search that says Virginia activates official militia. That's probably enough that it'll get that article you to get come out. But it tells you a lot more details and it shows you this is for real. The president was just impeached and they don't care. They didn't obey their own rules. Procedures or rules. No. People have been talking. This is exactly what Hitler did, what every dictator does is to get your gun. And that's exactly what the Democrats are trying to do in Virginia as we speak. It is. I'm not going to put words in Andy Bashir's mouth, Governor Bashir, but I believe he has that kind of desire. Yeah, I, I believe he would do whatever he could do, but he's been dealt a hand that we now have Republicans in the Senate and Republicans in the House that would stand up against some of this. But by executive order, he's already on the march to do whatever he can. Pushing abortion, which is the Democrats' hallmark. And this guy that was the evangelist on here, what was his name again? Wall Now. W-A-L-L-N-A-U. Let me say something. When you're all talking about the culture war, there was a lady that I saw, because I do like John, and we do a lot of research. This one girl was saying how no matter what, they do in the Senate, he still was impeached. And what she doesn't understand is just because you're impeached doesn't mean you're going to be thrown out of office. What I wrote back to her is said that God is still sovereign. Here are men who want to destroy a republic. They don't have no problem in allowing New York City when they just shouted on the rooftops because a baby can be kept comfortable. I'm just giving a summary of what I said, but also they try to silence us. They shout us down. Adam Schiff was back in his hometown. Did y'all see the video? Oh, yeah. They actually were saying liar, liar, and they shot him down. That's the first time I've ever seen Republicans and even Democrats who were tired of the lies shout a Democrat down because this is what they've been doing for years, and it wasn't done vindictively. It was done purposely. The guy yesterday, what's his name? Ben Kennedy. Ben Kennedy. He was talking about the Bible, mm -hmm. and he said, there's a scripture in the Bible that says if somebody slaps you in the head on one cheek, you're supposed to turn the other cheek. He says that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. That's you personally. If somebody offends you or whatever, offends you yeah. or hits you, you're supposed to forgive them. 
forgive them and laugh it off, go about your business. But if somebody walks into your church and murders your pastor, you're not supposed to sit there. And turn the cheek. You're supposed to shoot him in the head. That's what the Bible says. You're supposed to defend yourself. And And defend your friends. I know at our church, they've got a dozen guys in there, and they're all Um, armed. So if somebody comes into our church Sunday morning and starts shooting people. They're going to get shot. There's about 12 guys. They all got weapons. Boom! They're going to take him out in a hurry. Lee, what? The chaplain down in Frankfurt. We would need to discuss that sometime. Bring some of his video stuff in there about there are verses in the Bible where Jesus encouraged Peter to bring get a your sword. sword. There's more than just that reference. You have to take up your arms against your enemies, and our enemies are within our state. It's not just me personally that's hit or something. There's Cindy. They're going to hit her. They're going to blow her away. They're going to blow away Brother John. I'm not supposed to sit there and just turn my cheek. (laughs) Turn a cheek or don't turn a cheek. You're supposed to pull out your 38 special and (laughs) let him have it. Do something. Now that's important. That's True biblical Christianity. It's not, oh, well, just let them kill the president and let them kill the pastor and let them kill your friends, let them kill your wife. No, oh, it's all right. Just turn the other cheek. Well, that's a lot of baloney. That's not in the Bible. What's in the Bible is stand up for righteousness. The person bold. that doesn't defend his family is it's worse than an infidel. infidel. Isn't yeah. that what it said? Yeah. This is important. Let's see if I can get this back on here, because this guy, or his name is Lance Walnau, W-A-L-L-N-A-U, W-A-L-L-N-A-U. He's some kind of evangelist. says he studied at Southeast Christian College. Merry Christmas. Somebody sent this to me. Oh, here it is, Jerry Schreiner. He's an evangelist, too. Anyway, I know this guy. And he said this to me. Now, this is, of course, like we said, about a year old. But it's more important today than it was a year ago when he said it. It's time to wake up. Well, there are groups like Antifa. They are organized, and they are willing to attack bloody... Anybody. Anybody. That disagrees with freedom or Christianity or anything. They're here to... They're like Nazis. Most of them say they're all about the Constitution, the Founding Fathers. Well, it's interesting, just a few short days or weeks ago, they were talking about how the Founding Fathers were racist and all this stuff. Who said that? All of them been saying that lately. Pelosi. All of them. That's what the children are being taught, too, that were based on racism. In the public schools that you and I are paying for. What bothers me is they are pure liars, how they even put the impeachment process through. They never did say what he did. They took Russia out of the mix. They just said he obstructed justice. He has the right to abstain from that. He does not owe Congress anything. Now, if they go to court, so that's what they want him to do, to go to court. But they didn't. And then he said he would, but he wanted to go through the proper procedure. We're out of time. Oh, okay. Well, she says we got another minute or two. How many we have? Five minutes? Oh, two. Two minutes. Okay. Okay. This article says that if we let the rich liberals take over our government, they're going to take the guns away, That's, like they are in Virginia. Virginia should be a wake-up call right now. We should all wake up because of the elections, and we got to be involved, and it's not enough to just vote. you got to get out there and put your money into the good candidates, and put your time in, and put your blood, sweat, and tears into those educate, good candidates. Educate people. That's the number yeah. one. A lot of people believe what they're being told from the mainstream media. Oh, let me say one other thing. We're in a war. I bet we got people listening to this program today that are interested in freedom, in the Constitution, in right and wrong. They're interested in Christianity. We need you to call us right now. The number is 895-5025. 895-5025. Leave your name and address and phone number on the answering machine, and we'll get back with you. We got all kinds of stuff here we would like to send you. Here's some interesting stuff. I love that one. This one? Yeah. Where's the camera? This way? Right. It's over here. It says, Hillary for prison. 
Here's another one that says, together under God, we're in. Still can't see. I'll put it over here, Dr. Susan. That's all right, right there. There's the one that's Hillary. And there's one other in here, I think. There it is. This is the most important one. This one would And be. you need that on your car. You can tape it in the back window or do anything you want. You need that. That's a powerful, that's the name that's above every name. Jesus. This is the name that opens prison doors and sets the captives free. You need this on your car, and it'll help save America. You go, oh, I don't want to put it on my bumper. Better do something because it's getting worse. Okay, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in and tune in again next week for the rest of the news. Hey, this is Frank Simon with the rest of the news, and we have a special guest today, Cindy Marlowe, and we've got some outstanding videos that we want to show you about what's going on in the world today. Okay, can we show that first one? There it is. Our movement is about replacing a failed and corrupt political establishment with a new government controlled by you, the American people. The Washington establishment and the financial and media corporations that fund it exist for only one reason, to protect and enrich itself. The establishment has trillions of dollars at stake in this election. For those who control the levers of power in Washington and for the global special interests, they partner with these people that don't have your good in mind. Our campaign represents a true existential threat like they haven't seen before. This is not simply another four-year election. This is a crossroads in the history of our civilization that will determine whether or not we, the people, reclaim control over our government. The political establishment that is trying to stop us is the same group responsible for our disastrous trade deals, massive illegal immigration, and economic and foreign policies that have bled our country dry. The political establishment has brought about the destruction of our factories and our jobs as they flee to Mexico, China, and other countries all around the world. It's a global power structure that is responsible for the economic decisions that have robbed our working class, stripped our country of its wealth, and put that money into the pockets of a handful of large corporations and political entities. This is a struggle for the survival of our nation. And this will be our last chance to save it. This election will determine whether we're a free nation or whether we have only the illusion of democracy, but are in fact controlled by a small handful of global special interests rigging the system, and our system is rigged. This is reality. You know it, they know it, I know it, and pretty much the whole world knows it. The Clinton machine is at the center of this power structure. We've seen this firsthand in the WikiLeaks documents in which Hillary Clinton meets in secret with international banks to plot the destruction of U.S. sovereignty in order to enrich these global financial powers, her special interest friends, and her donors. Honestly, she should be locked up. The most powerful weapon deployed by the Clintons is the corporate media the press. Let's be clear on one thing. The corporate media in our country is no longer involved in journalism. They're a political special interest, no different than any lobbyist or other financial entity with a total political agenda. And the agenda is not for you, it's for themselves. Anyone who challenges their control is deemed a sexist, a racist, a xenophobe. They will lie lie, lie, and then again, they will do worse than that. They will do whatever is necessary. The Clintons are criminals, remember that. This is well documented, and the establishment that protects them has engaged in a massive cover-up of widespread criminal activity at the State Department and the Clinton Foundation in order to keep the Clintons in power. They knew they would throw every lie they could at me 
and my family and my loved ones. They knew they would stop at nothing to try to stop me. Nevertheless, I take all of these slings and arrows gladly for you. I take them for our movement so that we can have our country back. I knew this day would arrive. It's only a question of when. And I knew the American people would rise above it and vote for the future they deserve. The only thing that can stop this corrupt machine is you. The only force strong enough to save our country is us. The only people brave enough to vote out this corrupt establishment is you, the American people. Our great civilization has come upon a moment of reckoning. I didn't need to do this, folks, believe me. I built a great company and I had a wonderful life. I could have enjoyed the fruits and benefits of years of successful business deals and businesses for myself and my family, instead of going through this absolute horror show of lies, deceptions, malicious attacks. Who would have thought? I'm doing it because this country has given me so much, and I feel so strongly that it's my turn to give back to the country that I love. I'm doing this for the people and for the movement and we will take back this country for you and we will make america great again good work cindy Finally. that sort of summarizes current events he says that there's on the one hand the voters the workers people that love america and on the other hand you have the deep state and the corporate media global financial powers and they've been making crooked trade deals where we pay all the tariffs, but we don't receive any tariffs. Think about it. He was talking about the Clinton Foundation. They were getting monies from foreign people. Yeah. Why hasn't that been investigated? We know the answer, but we're all on poor Trump. Yeah. You don't ever hear him talk about it. Well, we're hoping that the truth will eventually come out on some of these crooked deals and the people that were crooked before will be punished for breaking the law. Barr's been really silent, William Barr, and I really think they're waiting till they get the goods. Yeah. He did say one thing was on Laura Ingram, I believe. He didn't come out and fill the veins, but in a sense, he was saying something's going to get done. They know deep down inside that they've been breaking the law mm -hmm. and cheating and lying. It's eventually going to come out on them. All darkness comes out. Truth and light, as long as Bar and he's very bold, and he, I think he and the other guy, the IG, anyway, Durham. Something made me, I don't know, when I was watching that video, what did the lawmakers make? I won 160000 a year or something like that. How do they become millionaires? How are McConnell a millionaire? I'm not going to put the guy totally down because he's trying to help Trump, but how are all Pelosi and McConnell is because he's been there a long time, but how do they become millionaires on just making a 100 something thousand a year? Like he says, Trump is getting fair trade deals. The left-wingers hate that. Why do they hate that? Because they want America to keep paying through the nose 